Hey everyone, it's Will from Garage Built Athlete, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Strike Movement Haze. I've actually had these for quite a while now, so I can give a decent review. I got them in December, lovely Christmas present, thank you mum. And I've been after a pair of Strike Movement for quite some time, but you know, when they're Trainers now are 120, 150 quid. You can't just be dropping into new pairs left, right and centre. I like to get my money's worth, we know this. So uh, yeah, Christmas isn't birthdays, it's new trainer time. And then months later, when I get around to it, it's new trainer review time. So here you have it. These are, uh, yeah, the Strike Movement Haze and they are in all black with this funky green insole. And do you know what? I love the look of these trainers. These trainers would work well as a casual trainer for me. Just the looks of them, very understated. You've got the Strike Movement logo on the heel and on the tongue. And you've also got a bit of brand in there on the bottom. Yeah, they are day. I've been, I've been wearing them non-stop for, for workouts. So yeah, you can actually see the wear that's gone into these for three months of uh, continual use. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some information about the Hayes shoe right off the box. Um, if you wonder why I'm looking down here, it's because that's where the box is. So this is the Cross Platform 2. Uh, it says lightweight and responsive, rope resistant cross training outsole with anatomical, anatomical, yeah I said it right first time, anatomical toe box and expanded heel platform for extra stability. Uh, I guess in, that's the anatomical toe box and the expanded heel platform for extra stability. You've got an elevated sidewall chassis. I hope this makes sense to you trainer folk. Uh, so raised sidewall chassis for superior lateral rigidity and extended perimeter protection during rope climbs. Yeah, okay. Uh, balanced durometers. They're just making it up. Medium density Cush 50, that's trademarked. Don't try and use Cush 50. I know that was right at the tip of everyone's tongue. Midsole over responsive rubber outsole provides uniform cushioning that maintains exceptional ground fill. Now, if there's one thing I like about my ground fill, is that it's exceptional. Low stack heights, full contact heel area, full, mind you and low stack height offer extra stability and minimize energy loss during lifts. And natural biomechanics, so it's a low drop, four millimeter heel height and anatomically shaped last with wide toe box promotes a natural mid to four foot strike. Okay, that, I'm, I really hope that makes a lot of sense to everybody at Strike Movement. Uh, because in the garage gym, some of that, some of those words were words I understood. Open up the box. It's got some more interesting information on the box. I mean, it, it tells you all about it. I, I should have not bothered doing this video and could have just put pictures of the box up. But yeah, one piece rubber outsole, a toe guard, natural biomechanics, elevated sidewall chassis. They're, they're, they're just repeating themselves now. Um, but yeah, lots and lots and lots of info on the box. It's quite a cool, cool box. I got these ones from Wit. So thank you, Wits. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying thank you to you. Paid for them. Uh, thanks again, Mum. And uh, let's let's talk a bit more about what I actually think about the shoe, rather than what the box is telling me about the shoe. I have used these in a, a variety of workouts. What I like to do is test them out in all different types of functional fitness workouts. We can call it CrossFit again, right? Yeah, that's cool. So. Uh, over the three months that I've had them. The shoe itself, I've actually found uh, a little bit more narrow than some of my other shoes. So I, I wear a size 11 and I bought a size, well, it's a US men's 12, which is a UK size 11. I found it more narrow and a bit more hugging and fitting just on the mid sole there. Um, I do have a little bit wider feet. I prefer barefoot shoes, I like my Vivo barefoots. You know, nanos are really good, 
Uh, newer Metcons are nice. Uh, so yeah, so these are slightly hugged, but I think that's just a little preference of mine. I like to have a little bit more room there. Um, in the actual toe box, absolutely fine. Lots of room in the toe. Really, really comfortable shoe to wear. More comfortable for moving around in generally than the Metcons that I have. Um, they've got that really hard rubber sole uh, on the heel, especially the sticky rubber on the toe. These ones are just that single uh, sole, that one piece, uh, which has got a little bit of squish to it, but not too much. So yeah, it's got some flexibility, uh, which does help a lot in the workouts. Quite a nice feature on this, which I found uh, really enjoyable actually, was it's got a little lace pouch, like a little hideaway for your laces. So this kind of neoprene feeling tongue folds up, you bundle your laces up and you pop them up and under there so they're hidden away. That has not been a problem in terms of my laces coming undone. I have to double knot every other shoe I've had, especially for rope climbs and uh, for double unders, but having that feature on that shoe, mwah, absolutely awesome. Love that from Strike Movement, really, really good idea. I don't know why more people haven't done that. That's a stroke of genius. Um, it's very, very light. It feels nice and breathable. You can see it's got that classic don't wear in the rain CrossFit shoe appeal. Uh, yeah, you, you don't want to be wearing these in, in any sort of drizzle, otherwise you're going to get very cold and wet socks. Um, but that's just part and parcel of any CrossFit shoe I've found. You have that breathability, so you don't get the protection on the other side. It has a nice little tag for pulling the shoe on. So if you're lazy like me, you don't even have to undo the laces. You just rip that bad boy right in. Uh, and not much wear from actually doing that a lot of the time, not hardly any bobbling on the inside of that shoe either. Speaking of it feeling light, I did actually weigh the shoe and I like to compare them to my existing shoes. So uh, I weighed these shoes, so they are 350 grams per shoe, uh, that's 700 grams total. So when you're doing toes to bar, you know, all that adds up, you don't want too much weight on your feet. Um, you know, flying around, lifting more than you need to. Uh, compared to the Nike Metcon, uh, which is a Metcon 7, they came in at 393 grams. Uh, the Nike React Turbos, uh, 371 grams, and then my Nano Unknowns, 380 grams. So actually, the lightest of all my CrossFit shoes so far. I was quite surprised about that. I thought that the the Metcons would be a touch heavier with the, the hard heel, but yeah, quite a bit of difference there, more than 10% more than lighter overall. They've been good for all the big compound movements so far. Deadlift, nice and solid. Uh, sometimes with a higher heel drop, you end up kind of rocking forward onto your toes. These, we've got that four millimeter heel drop. It feels nice and stable. You're not pulling forwards on it. Also with the squats, it's got that slight drop there, it can help. If you have some ankle mobility issues, I do like to squat um, in all sorts of different shoes. So being able to just pop these on and feel confident and comfortable, the feet weren't rolling around, it didn't feel too soft. There was a good stability uh, across the whole of the foot, which helped with the squats. Similarly, with the Olympic lifting in a workout and just on a, a weightlifting session, these have proved really, really good. Driving through the, the midfoot, being able to lift off and, and land quite comfortably in snatch and clean uh, has been quite a treat for these shoes. But it's not all good news. I did find double unders a little bit difficult to get into. My go-to shoe is the Metcon 7. Absolutely love that shoe. For me, it can do everything apart from help you get quietly out of a house with a hard floor because it sounds like you're walking with high heels. Um, and also running. I just don't want to run more than 200 meters in a, in a Metcon. Um, it's just not something that I enjoy. I mean, I don't like to run more than 200 meters in any shoe, but if I had to, I wouldn't pick a Metcon to do it. These have been great for shuttle runs. So I did the open workout with the shuttle runs and burpees in these, really, really good. Apart from shuttle runs, not had an opportunity to test these out on actual running because I hate it, uh, but I'm quite happily 
walking around you know, casual uh, with these shoes without thinking twice. The other downside of the shoe which I found personally was whilst they have got all this technology that they've created around the rope climb and, and guarding the shoe, I found I had very little grip coming back down the rope. You might think that's a good thing if you are confident in dropping and holding uh, the rope just in your hands and, and not using your feet to slow yourself down. I like to control my feet on the way down um, and these ones I found are so fast descent I found it difficult to actually gain grip on the way down. On the way up was a different story, managed to lock it in fine, I just couldn't find that, that bite point on the way down and it was felt like I was skating uh, on thin ice. So how are they worn? Well, you know, here's some close-ups for you to have a look at the, the actual wear on the shoe. I've had a pretty good quality straight out of the box. There were, as I tend to find, a couple of issues with little glue marks that you get on these uh, on these shoes, and it's not always perfection. I suppose you want to you want to get perfection, but you're not always going to going to receive it. Um, and then this is the only real issue that I've had from using these shoes most likely happening from burpees uh, where I'm rubbing that toe on the floor just a slight lift of that toe guard coming up um, the sole's in good condition like I say the insides the laces are holding up yeah, I have done some rope climbs in them but I'm probably going to swap them out when I do rope climbs as I just prefer well, the trainers for those, so hopefully they won't get absolutely battered from rope climbs. But day to day, session to session, I'm either in these or my Metcon 7s, and that's saying something because those have been hard to beat. Um, but yeah, so there you have it, another review from us. If you did enjoy it, then please leave us a like, subscribe for more content. If you've got the strike movement, let me know what you think. Pop your comments in down below if you disagree with anything I said. I don't care. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube for more garage built athlete content. You grab yourself some merch, it'll really help us out. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate your patience. Whilst we've been reviewing the shoe, I know a few of you have been asking for it. But we'll see you in the next video. See ya!